What's up guys, CP Modder here, back with another video. Today we're here with another PC build plan, and this time we're going down the no GPU build route. Because of the fact that the second generation of Ryzen chips have been out for quite some time, and also too, thanks to the fact that the B450 boards are out, meaning we can get pretty decent performance without needing to buy a super over the top motherboard, or needing to worry about BIOS updates out of the box. Also too, the price is pretty elite because we managed to get a 1337 build, which is pretty cool in the price department. So all in all though, we are building a system, no GPU, but is really upgradable. Whether you want to throw in more RAM, throw in more storage, overclock this guy, or you want to throw in a GPU, this guy is ready to go without buying parts that would need to be replaced down the line. Instead of buying a lower end video card just to replace, instead of buying four sticks of RAM just to replace some RAM, all of this guy is ready and prepped for an upgrade in the future, which is definitely what this system is all about. Throw in a dedicated GPU and this guy would be off to the races to crush a bunch of benchmarks because the 8 core CPU that we did pick out is not getting old anytime fast. But speaking of that CPU, let's go ahead and jump into the build, starting off with the CPU. And that CPU is the Ryzen 7 2700X. Again, an 8 core part with a crazy 3.7 gigahertz speed. This guy is an all round epic system, not to mention it has an integrated uh, Vega graphics option. So not only are we getting boss CPU performance, but also too, not half that bad. GP performance when it comes to the gaming front. Sure, it's not going to be as good as, say, a mid to high end GPU standalone unit, but all in all, definitely going to be perfect for 1080p gaming, which does, well, most of what people are out there. And also, do another nice thing is to see just how far we've come from those trash iGPUs that we had a little while ago. It's nice to see that we're getting some really decent performance out of onboard graphics. I still remember, sort of, not too long ago, where you probably wouldn't even want to boot Windows on integrated graphics. It was that bad. So, it's nice to see that iGPUs have come quite some way. And speaking of coming quite some way, the motherboard side has gotten a nice little bump with the B450 lineup coming out, meaning we can get lower cost motherboards and still get the same performance. And for today's build, we went with the ASUS TUF B450M Plus motherboard. Now this guy is a micro ATX board, which is super nice. It's compact and delivers everything that we need. And honestly, is one of the first TUF boards that I found that I didn't really think looked like trash. It's not too bad of an option here. We get four RAM DIMMs. We also do get all the connectivity we need instead of display port outputs. We also do get a nice set of PCI Express connections if we want to throw in video cards down the line. And thanks to the fact that it is not based on the X470 chipset, we can get it at a lower price point. Don't get me wrong, if you are going to be going all out, you can go with the X470 chipset, but we did want to save a little bit of money here so you could start to save up for your next upgrade a little bit down the line. Sure, this system is a little bit on the expensive side, but let's face it, we are in Australia and a $1,300 PC is like a $200 PC if you are in America. In terms of RAM, this is where we sort of saw something really interesting. We all know that RAM prices are extremely expensive and you need to take out like a second mortgage to go ahead and buy, well, anything more than one gigabyte of RAM. And well, today we actually went with the G-Skill Trident Z RGB 1600 3000 megahertz kit. Name everything, hang on a second. You bought RGB RAM in a price point that's so expensive? Well, actually not really. This RAM kit with the 3000 megahertz speed was only $30 more than the 2066 RAM kit that I was looking at that didn't have RGB, didn't even have heat spreaders. It was your basic kind of cheapo stuff. And for $30 more, we got faster speed more RGB and more colors, and also to more attractive looking modules. Sure, RGB is not gonna be up everybody's street, but you can also set it to a single color and you're pretty much fine to go there. Now, it's also too really important about the speed department and it was good that we got a higher spec speed because the iGPU that's paired up with the CPU doesn't have any VRAM on it. It relies on system RAM to, well, go ahead and use as the frame buffer. So if we didn't have super fast RAM, we could actually be seeing less performance out of the iGPU than if we were to give it fast RAM. So 3000 megahertz was selected here today. Sure, you could go faster for, I think there's like a 4000 kit out, but Honestly, that's really getting expensive. 3000 was fast enough and is also too expensive enough, so we'll just leave it right there. Now in the storage department, it's pretty much a standard point here at this point. If you've seen any of my other builds, it's pretty much standard here. We grabbed ourselves an 860 EVO 250GB drive from Samsung and a 2TB WD Blue Drive, and that was basically it. Now for me, I don't really like going NVMe unless you really need something that has NVMe, such as video editing, because it's expensive and really you don't notice it in day-to-day -day operations. 
For me personally, I run a standard MSATA SSD on my laptop and a standard SATA SSD on my desktop, and I've not noticed any differences between, say, my XPS 15 that has an NVMe SSD. Sure, if I'm really pushing it when it comes to storage tasks, I may notice a slight difference, but all in all, uh, personally, I just like the money savings for the standard SATA drive. And honestly, it's really easy to pluck out and put into different systems because just about every system nowadays supports a SATA drive. So that's why we went down that road. You could easily enough go with an M.2 drive and that would be a really nice little bump here. But seeing that we are already spending a fair bit of money on the system, a little bit of savings can't hurt here. And let's face it, we're really just looking at the system to play video games, so it's really not gonna make that much of a difference. Now case-wise, this is always subjective, but today I went with the Cooler Master, Master box light RGB 5. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of RGB but you can always set those colored fans to whatever color you want and again thanks to the fact that we've got RAM that's also too able to be set to whatever color we want we can easily match that system up for a little bit of lighting that isn't too over the top and hey if you like RGB you can totally do that. The main reason though I picked up this case is I like the look of the big windows all over the place and I do like big windows myself so that's why we went down that road. Power supply wise I actually checked out this power supply well I haven't done a video but I've used it myself, which is the EVGA Supernova G2 750 watt. Again, I recently grabbed my hands on this guy. I didn't actually do a video on it yet, but it's not too bad. Now, yes, 750 watts, complete overkill. We're using an iGPU, not really that much there. However, as I did mention, the idea of this system is for upgrades to come down the line. Maybe six, 12 months time, you can afford a 1070, 1080, or whatever the next generation is, as at the time of recording, Nvidia is holding an event, like right as I speak. So who knows what's gonna come out of that. But my point, being sure 750 watts is completely overkill however this system is all about upgrading so again eight cores definitely going to be fine so drop in a high-end gpu you don't need to upgrade anything but put in a GPU, so that's why we went down that road. Throw in a Windows key for $13 from GBG Mall, and boom, we have a $1337 PC build for this month. Now, yes, again, as I have covered a number of times, someone's gonna be yelling in my comment sections that this is an overkill build, it's an iGPU system, we should be going down the cheap option, cheap, cheap, cheap. And sure, you can do that. However, again, I really don't like buying parts with the intent of replacing them in six, 12, or even 13 months time. I really don't like the idea of buying something just to throw in the bin or put on a shelf because, well, you don't have a point for it. This system totally is overkill for an iGPU system, but is ready to throw in more RAM, throw in more GPUs, throw in more storage. Everything is easy to upgrade and you don't need to take anything out of the existing system. Go to 32 gigs of RAM, you don't need to take any RAM out. Add in a video card, you don't need to take any existing video cards out. Add in, say, some more storage, you don't need to take anything out. Everything is ready to go. You can drop in M.2, M SATA, you can drop in anything this thing is ready to go and again as the next generation of nvidia cards are coming out you can grab yourself some like a 1070 or even a 1080 on the cheap when the next gen does come out and you'd be getting yourself an absolute destroyer of a 1080p system and even better if you are looking for higher resolutions and hey you can even do streaming and do some content creation if you did really want it is an absolute boss system do let me know what you think of igpus down in that comment sections i think they've come a long way but do let me know what you think are down there again Again, if you want to find these parts, I've left a PC part picker link in that description box and also to all the parts are linked down there. And a little pro tip for you guys, if you are an international viewer and see the PC part link linking in Australia, go up to the right hand corner of PC part picker, select your market and boom, the prices will change and retailers will change. I don't need to do any extra linking, everything is there for you. Guys, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.